Okay, good to see everybody. Uh, really good work out there today. Uh, a lot of good situational football work. Got down in the red zone really every day in OTAs. We're getting in the red zone uh, every day. We're working our third and fourth downs. Uh, had some third and fourth and longer distances today, which I thought was really good teaching for both sides of the ball. Uh, really appreciative of the guys that are out there working. And, and they're, they are grinding. It was warm uh, out there. So I think that's, that's all good work. So uh, really impressed with this group. And then we got to have another good day uh, tomorrow, uh, which will end our OTAs this week. Uh, but really pleased with where we are with uh, recognizing we have a ton of uh, room to grow. And with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, excused absences with Jadavion, Joel. It's all voluntary. Uh, I got so you. they don't need my excusal. <laughs> got you. So yesterday there was another lawsuit filed against Deshaun. That's the first one since he's joined the Browns. Did you guys anticipate that? I would tell you with all that, uh, Tom, respectfully, I'm going to let the legal pre proceedings play out, uh, and, and I'm respectful of, of that process. Does that change anything about his standing with the organization or your comfort level with him? Again, I think it goes back, uh, Nate, to – the, the work we did prior to, to this, uh, we, we've covered that, uh, but I'll just uh, continue to let the proceedings play out. Kevin, Deshaun's getting reps with both the first and second offensive line. Is he getting extra work or is that just, just part of the spring? Yeah, I wouldn't look into that. Uh, we're trying, like anything, you're always trying to get everybody ready. Uh, so you sometimes don't have uh, your one tight end lined up next to your one tackle necessarily per play. So we're rotating guys and, you know, specifically to the defensive side, I think that coaches are doing a really nice job of moving guys around and, and trying them in different spots. Uh, because as we all know, during the season, you're going to need somebody to go play a position that they haven't played a ton of. So now's the time to get these reps. And, and I think these reps are just so valuable. You got David locked up uh, for four more years. Uh, Pretty nice contract for him, considering he hasn't been a, a focal point offensively. I think that's fair to say uh, the last couple of years. Um, is that something that you guys anticipate changing, that he's going to be featured maybe a little more? Yeah, I think with Dave, uh, certainly want to feature him. I think his skill set, uh, as we all know, uh, great size, great length in terms of catching the football, being able to go up and pluck uh, contested catches, uh, I, would talk, I would speak to his development as a blocker. Uh, that's something that I'm proud of David uh, for his evolution of, of a blocker. So I think to your question, Daryl, yes, I think there's an evolution uh, that will continue for Dave, the player. Uh, with us last year, as you know, with Austin Hooper and David and, and Harrison, we played a, a lot of 13. And uh, now with Hoop, gone and, and we'll see if there's a third tight end that emerges uh, but certainly you'd expect some of that share to be divvied up among all the guys including David uh, so that's all remains to be seen uh, but David certainly is deserving of that contract he earned it uh, he did everything we asked him to do yeah, we've seen the, the last three years including two with you with David he has big games big moments and then you know, it seems like he disappears a little bit just in terms of uh, targets within the offense, production within the offense. What do you attribute that to? And then what do you see going forward that's going to make him more of a consistent threat offensively for you guys? I, I would tell you, Jake, obviously we have to get into these games and, and, and game plan for these games and put players in position to go make plays and those type of things. But there's a, he's a big part of what we plan to do. I think that's there's no doubt about that. Uh, but I would just tell you what I'm most impressed with Dave is just his – um, I'll use the word evolution again, of becoming a complete tight end. There's not a lot of guys that can block and run and catch. Theoretically, when you go to three receivers, does that create better mismatch opportunities for the tight end than when you're in 13? Well, I, I don't know necessarily, Tony. I think uh, the one way to look at it would be if you're in 13 personnel and they're matching you with base, okay, so that's going to have – typically three linebackers on the field for them. Are they as good cover players? Then when you go 11 personnel, you may get dime, which is going to have one linebacker on the field. So I think it's dependent on the team you're playing. Uh, but we're always thinking about that type of question, always thinking about matchups when it comes to the tight end position. When it comes to David's like possible evolution plus the evolution he's already had, I guess like how exciting 
is it for you guys that he, this is a guy who's still only 25 and he has five years of, of experience under his belt? Yeah, I think it's a good point, Ashley, because he, he's 25. He's young. He's got, I don't know if he physically can grow uh, anymore, but uh, he, his game can grow. And that's a conversation I've had with him. And, and I do expect his game to grow. And it's not as simple as just saying, hey, we're going to throw more balls to you. I think his game will grow. Uh, you, you'll see it in the run game. You'll see it in the pass game. You'll see it kind of throughout. And I think he's committed to, to that. He, David wants to get better. And to be 25, I think you have that opportunity to get better. I think this was OTA 5 today. <coughs> do, you plan, do you plan to use all 10? We do. Do you see growth? And I, I, let me ask it like this. Mm -hmm. You have some continuity here, which we haven't had here in a long time. Do you see that helping things, anything smooth, anything run better? Well, uh, yes, uh, I think continuity is good in that regards, but it's the first time we've had 10 OTAs. And, and I want to point out how great it is having all those guys out there. It's a voluntary program, Tom, but it's great having those guys out there and working. And you're getting better every day when they're out there. They're getting better, even when you make a mistake, because you have to make that mistake once and you likely won't make it again. So I just think every opportunity we have out there uh, to improve as a football team is so in incredibly valuable. And then the continuity, like you mentioned, uh, I think it's great in terms of communication, certainly among the coaching staff and that type of thing. But we have plenty of new players, so there's a ton of coaching. There's a ton of learning that's going on. Look at pro high-profile offenses in the NFL. A lot of them do have that big tight end that can stretch the field. Just on the priority list, how important is it to have a tight end like that? Yeah, I think for us, it's always trying to feature your best players and, and trying to put – that's our job to put them in position to go make a play. And I think tight end, certainly for us, uh, has been something that we've tried to highlight. Uh, I know it's easy to divvy up and say the player, but then you can also say the room and collectively how the tight end room affects the offense, collectively how the wide receiver room affects the offense and so on and so forth. So uh, we're excited about the group we have and then it's incumbent on us to put those guys in position to succeed. Kevin, can you, uh, without well, the pads on and off, can you see how Nick Harris is settling in as it looks like a starting center? Yeah, I think without the pads on, Jeff, to your point, it's really hard to evaluate the offensive and defensive line outside of what they're doing in their individual drills. You can certainly evaluate that. But the way the rules are written, you really can't go full speed as a team. The guys don't have shells on. They just have helmets on. So we've tried to slow it way, way down when we're in a team setting. So it's an incomplete evaluation for everybody when the pads aren't on. Uh, but just speaking to Nick in general, uh, I think you guys know how we've talked about how he's treated this offseason, how he's come in great shape. Uh, he's worked incredibly hard uh, just from the day the season ended, uh, really throughout the offseason of working so hard in his body. Uh, and then, as we all know, that, that center position is, is making so many calls, uh, so much communication occurs from the center to the rest of the offensive line. And that's something that Nick uh, is very good at, uh, and he works hard at it. Shows up. What you know, what does his presence mean to you to have him out there on the field? And also, where do you see his game growing? Yeah, uh, I think another player, Mary Kay, and I know that Miles is a great player. I think he can get better, and and that's conversations I've had with Miles and a bunch of our players is is never uh, settling on on where you are. And potential is just that; it's potential. So I think he has an opportunity to get better. There's areas of his game that he's talked with Coach Kiff uh, about wanting to improve. Uh, so when he's out there and on the field and with the team, I think he's working on those things. When you lock up guys like Jaden Cloudy and David Joku, how do you see that helping you in terms of like development uh, for a third tight end or uh, a guy like Alex Wright? Say that one more time, Jordan. I'm sorry. When you when you lock that up and you've got you've got these guys back and you know, how do you see that developing, allowing you to continue developing and, and find that third tight end and, and get Alex Wright up to speed? Third defensive end, are you saying? Locked up. Yeah, I, I think for us, you know, it goes to, I think Andrew and, and the crew do a great job of, of managing the cap and, and valuing our players and, and figuring out the, who we can keep here. And I've said it before, you guys have heard me say it, I would love to keep everybody. Uh, I'd love to pay everybody every dime uh, that comes their way, but it's a challenge to work that. So anytime you can. Uh, secure a player like was mentioned for a bunch of years a young player i think it's outstanding and 
now to your second part of your question, there, there are young players on our roster who we are developing and they're all developing at their own pace. Uh, and, and when guys like Alex are, are ready uh, and, and ready to play and ready to make an impact, they'll be in there. But I think we just have to be smart about each guy develops at, a, at its own pace. Deshaun, the player just on the field, seems like everything runs really smooth with, with him out there. Not a lot of finger pointing, directing traffic, stuff that you usually see in the offseason. What, what has impressed you most about him on the field as he's not only learning this offense, but you know, operating it? Yeah, I think that's such a big part of it, Daryl, is learning. And it's, it goes from the classroom onto the field. It's watching tape on your own. So he's really dove into this and, and is trying real hard to get up to speed. And I think so much of it is rep-based. I, th I think you have to get reps on each one of these plays. And, and you can get bored in the offseason. So I think we have somewhere upwards of 350 seven-on-seven -seven reps this offseason. Each one of them is valuable. And you may take one – a certain play and run it from the left hash, and then run it from the right hash, run it out of 11, run it out of 12, run it with a motion, run it with a motion and a shift. And we're just trying to be, make it rote memory for the quarterback, for everybody, but particularly that quarterback and understanding you got it versus single high this time, then you're going to get it versus shell, then you're going to get it versus pressure. Those are the type of things that you do in this offseason. And for a quarterback uh, coming to a new team and, and learning a new system and your new teammates and those type of things, I just think you have to dive in uh, t to that process, and he's done that. So the first time that some of us have seen extended for Deshaun on the field, it just seems like that ball comes out like really quick and just, just really crisp. Not to compare to anybody else, but would you say that is something you've noticed with him? Yeah, I mean, his physical ability uh, certainly jumps out to you on the field, and, and his stroke, uh, as AVP would say, with, with the, how, how the ball comes out and how quickly it comes out and uh, where his, his elbow and hand are in relation to that ball coming out and the velocity and all those type of things. I think it's been uh, impressive to watch uh, this caliber of player be able to get the ball out of his hand quickly uh, and, and really accurately, as we all know, is so important. Last one here. I was, I was just curious, um, so in a situation potentially where we might be looking at um, discipline uh, down the road for Deshaun Watson, obviously you have Jacoby uh, Brissett uh, potentially starting off the new year. How do you feel about your quarterback depth um, with your the guy behind Brissett not having started and potentially your comfort level with you and as a staff having to lean on Baker in that situation as well? We'll see how all of that plays out. Uh, and, and it's for us, we're just trying to take information as it comes. When it comes to backup quarterbacks, I just mentioned AVP, uh, it's really, really helpful having a coordinator that has been a backup quarterback in the NFL. He understands the quarterback position, of course, but really understands backup quarterbacks and how they operate. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But with backups, they have to be ready to play with zero reps. Sometimes you get zero reps and that's the name of the game. Sometimes you get to prepare for a game that you know you're starting uh, and you have some uh, head time to, to develop and those type of things. But I'd particularly tell you AVP does a great job with that quarterback room because of his experience as a backup. Yeah, again, with all those uh, type of questions, it's really just take information day by day.